Are you ready to make your weak, lanky, free-to-play Shao become a demonic monster that will destroy everything in the game? Well, oh, almost everything. Welcome to my quick guide for free-to-play Shao using realistically obtainable gear, no 5-star weapons, max level 80, max talent level level 8, and no more than one other 5-star per team. If you want to know how to make Shao a million times stronger instantly, change your language to Japan. By doing this, Kirito's soul is infused with Shao, which gives your ears a damage bonus. But anyways, Shao is the newest limited 5-star edgelord, and he's strong as hell, boasting not only great damage, but also great maneuverability, which combined to make a really, really fun character to play with. There's a reason he was hyped since before the game even released. Skill 1 is a flurry of fast attacks, with his charge attack being a suedo AoE hit. The skill 1 is also tied to your plunge attack damage, which is Shao's main gimmick, making his plunges the strongest in the game once his demon form is activated via skill 3. It is important to note there is more than one plunge damage effect, a low one, a high one, and one where if you hit the enemy directly on the way down, you get an extra hit. Generally, once in demon form, you want to do the high one, but it'll depend on your crit rate. If you got low crit rate, the low one should be better since you can spam it faster for more chances at critting. But if you got the recommended crit rate, then the high one is the best damage output. Do note that between plunges, you can do a basic attack and cancel its animation with the next jump, letting you eat more damage than simply jump spamming. For skill 2, he learns instant transmission from Goku, so he can maneuver or attack a target instantly with his skill. While you can get around with it faster, it does allow you to reach certain enemies that are hard to hit, or conversely, dodge an attack in a pinch. It also does a boatload of damage and has two charges at C0, making it a great burst skill. Because it does animal damage, this also generates energy for your elemental burst skill 3. A good tech to be aware of is using it twice before going into demon form, and then into demon form, you spam your plunges, and by the time demon form is over, you should be able to use the E skill once again. Just make sure not to use the E during demon form as you'd be wasting your DPS. Note that even if you do use the skill to in demon form though, you still get the particles added to your next demon form anyway, so don't worry about not using it if you have to, but ideally only use it during no mass form. This doesn't apply if you got C6 Shao though, which would encourage spamming wind cycle during demon mode. And lastly, skill 3, elemental burst, Shao does the responsible thing and wears a mask during pandemic. Bernie Sanders will be proud. Unfortunately though, it is an evil mask that basically gives him living weapon from Neo. This enhances his normal attacks and most importantly, plunge attacks. During this form, his jump is a super jump like that of a flea springing you into the air to rain destruction when he comes back down, over and over and over again. And this is what makes Shao OP, broken, and most importantly, fun. This form makes him excel against multiple enemies and even bosses as well, though not to the extent of Ganyu and some other burst attackers. This skill does have a downside in that it does cost a lot of energy, meaning it's slow to reactivate once you've used it. Also, you lose HP while in this form, although the HP loss is negligible but it will be more annoying in Dragon Spine for sure. The last caveat is it turns all your damage into Animo, so enemies that are immune to Animo laugh in Shao's face when he dresses up for Halloween. For passive talents, the first increases Bane damage gradually over time, up to 25%. The second increases Wind Cycle damage after the first one is used by 15%. With C1, he gets 3 cycles instead of 2, which, if you space the attacks far enough 3 seconds apart, you'll reach 3 stacks easy for a 45% damage boost on the final one. And the last passive reduces stamina when climbing. Pretty cool. So those are his skills. The order in which that you should increase them is from top to bottom. His skill 3 only marginally increases mass form damage, so it's not as big as a deal as the other ones, skill 1 being the most important. 862 is what I used in Eclipse, mostly because I'm out of f***ing Risen. Constellation bonuses are here in one screen to know what to look out for, Basically, C1 and C6 are the best ones, but they might as well be non-existent to us free-to-play players, right? His Ascendancy gives crit chance though, which is great for lessening the artifact RNG bullcrap. Do note that you'll need those dumb flowers to ascend them, as well as fight the new boss Godzilla things. For the flowers, here are locations where you can farm flowers. You can also buy 10 flowers a day from the guy in Liwei in this location. The best artifact setup is 2-piece Verbidiscent and 2-piece Glad. 
Noble Sublige doesn't affect his demon form damage, and 4-piece VV doesn't really do anything at all for Xiao. So to be honest, his artifact options are not that great. Glad is nice, but if it means losing artifacts with better crit damage substats, I wouldn't stress too much about completing the Glad set. Example, if you got a 25% crit damage on a different artifact, and no crit damage Glad pieces, then not completing Glad for that 25% crit damage is the better move. For artifact main stats, attack, animal damage, and crit damage are best in slot, which is standard for main DPS carries. For substats, you want crit damage first, crit rate if you need it, and energy recharge for your top 3 picks. Attack percent is the fourth important stat. Here are my artifacts I used in the video, which as you can see, are way worse than a lot of showcase videos of Xiao. I still gotta get better very distance sets, but once again, I'm out of f***ing Risen. For, we for weapon, the best choice is the new 5 star Jade Spear, cause whale, but 4 star options are really solid for him too. BP Death March offers crit chance if your artifacts are low on crit, Blackcliff from the shop gives crit damage and just general damage, and there's also Favonius Spear for energy recharge, although I think it's not worth it unless you do not have an animal character and don't want to use the MC. But damage would obviously be worse if you did go that route. For team comps, Xiao is malleable. But because he is stingy with airtime, you do want teammates that have skills that linger on the field after they switch out, like Fischl or Xingqiu or Zhongli, and you want to generate him energy, which would be done by animal units. Venti is the best, obviously, but Sucrose. Sucrose is good. Gene can be a healer as well, and well, that's about it. But if you're a super free-to-play masochist like Enviosity, then sure, Win MC can be used, although I would advise against it. Two times Animo gives a nice resonance buff and speeds up his ease cooldown, but most importantly, particles, neutrons, neurons. Something like using Venti's E and then swapping into Xiao means Xiao gains those three particles. Likewise with Sucrose, and in fact, I even tried Xiao, Sucrose, and Venti in one team taking turns using E and then swapping to Xiao, and you can get Xiao's burst super freaking easily. So if your main game plan is to only use Xiao for everything, that is a fun comp to run. You throw in a healer like Bennett and you got yourself a boss killer with Sucrose holding Thrilling Dragon's Book and Venti with Sacrificial Bow. Hell, you could even run Sac on all those units for crazy energy gain for Xiao. The downside to that team is it's useless against animal immune enemies, but at that point, you wouldn't use Xiao against them anyways, right? A more balanced team though would be Xiao, Fischl, Bennett, and Sucrose. Replace Sucrose with Venti if you got him. Xiao, Zhongli, Albedo, and Bennett is fantastic as well for max damage boost, and Xing Chu can be squeezed in any of those teams as well. And Viosity tier free to play would be Xiao, Kea as sub DPS, and then MC Wind and Barbara for the healer. As an example for people who rerolled for Xiao and only got the starting units. And that is the quick guide to kicking butt with Xiao as free to play. Seeing those 40 to 60k plunges in those videos is sick, but hey, 20 to 30k for average free to play player is not bad either. So hope you guys enjoy the quickie. Let me know if you pulled for Xiao in the comments below, and if you did, how much did it cost you? Did it cost everything? If you want to see my summons for him, watch the equally short video in the end screen annotations, follow me on Twitch where I'll stream Genshin occasionally, and yeah, plunge that like button if you found the video useful, and subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more Genshin epicness.